there guys welcome back to the d time love show and today i want to share an interesting video with you guys vintage watches my take on vintage watches are they worth considering now this is a subject area that i haven't covered too much on the channel i've only really covered it based on rolex watches some of the rolex date just 1601 1603 and the 16014 date just that is currently in my collection and um i get asked many questions based on vintage watches and the impression that i get is that people are quite intimidated about buying the first vintage piece because it is very difficult to know what you're buying from an era from the 50s 60s and 70s where it's hard to find the actual manufacturer specifications online so you very much heavily rely on the forums youtube and still then you may still not be confident to pull the trigger now what i've always recommended to my fellow watch enthusiasts is to go to a trusted watch dealer that specializes within vintage watches now anyone worth their salt will provide you a 12 month warranty and living in london i always sort of recommend people to go to the burlington arcade in london and i'll leave a link to some vintage watch dealers that i highly recommend for you to source your first vintage piece and they will give you a lot of detailed description on the watch. Uh, you know, these guys have been in the game for a very long time and have a image to uphold as they deal with a lot of loyal high-end watch collectors within the watch world. But for myself, you know, I purchased a couple of vintage pieces a good two, three years ago. Uh, I've not really featured on the channel. They've been in a deposit box picking up dust. But most recently, I pulled out my Zenith Stellina jumbo size, which I think comes in around about 36.5 millimeters which, without the crown. So it's got a, a bit of a more of a modern uh, feel to it in terms of size. And I've put it on the alligator brown croc and it brings the watch back to life. And this is a watch where I have to say, I love its Art Deco vibe. It's a very cool dress piece, manual wind. Look at the patina on the dial. Absolutely stunning. It really is a, a beautiful piece and so thin and so elegant and sophisticated. It really oozes class and it really is a piece that I decided to show it some TLC, a little bit of love. But Zenith as a brand goes under the radar quite a bit. And um, Zenith itself achieved as a brand amazing things in the watch industry. Especially this piece is circa late 60s. And during this period, they were producing everything in-house from the screws to the movements. But probably one of their biggest achievements as Zenith as a brand, as a manufacturer of watchmaking, was when they produced the El Primero first automatic chronograph watch that was used by Rolex themselves in the Daytona. And we all know what sort of prices they fetch. But Zenith as a brand most recently has had a real resurgence within the watch world and the marketing that they're putting in has really started to elevate the brand and bringing them back to what they once were as one of the leading luxury watchmakers. Now, long term, what I've noticed with especially even the vintage pieces, which were very affordable, great bang per buck, they've started to creep in price. So, you know, a few years back, you could pick these up for four or five hundred pounds. And now they're going for one thousand 1500 the Stellinas, and they're, they're really they're really jumping in price so if you're on the lookout zenith is definitely a vintage piece you should consider you know the, the earlier models are, are quite dressy 
for that period. Um, but there are some chronographs as well. And the precious metals do come at a premium. You're probably looking at, you know, two, two and a half thousand pounds, all based on the condition. But I would highly recommend that you go to a trusted dealer and pay that little bit more money to basically get that reassurance, that peace of mind that you've bought a genuine piece and not a franken watch. Because it really does detract to the value of the piece if you did decide to flip it in the future. And next we have my Omega Cosmic Day Date with the Unishell case. And it's basically a case all in one. There's no case back. The only way you can get into the, the movement is through the top. And you need a special tool. And there's a reference number at the back there of the tool that you'd need to access this watch but uh, movement but it's a stunning retro piece and this is circa late 60s so it could be a 69 or 70 piece early 70 piece uh, i believe but i love that retro vibe it's a very cool watch and i've got it on this lizard grain uh strap a, a real lizard grain strap very nice indeed but i've got all the original straps for these watches and the buckles as such and uh, they are very thin leather back then. Uh, it's very different to what we expect in modern time pieces. But at this size, and because it's Unishell case, a bit of like, like a cushion case, um, it, it wears a lot bigger than some of the more vintage other Omega watches you find. Then that it's got some real retro vintage 70s vibe about it. I have to say, I love the dial. It's, it's patina. There's no loom or anything like that. But it is in perfect working condition, just like the Zenith dial. And look how it's patinaed there. Very nice indeed. Now, another watch that I have in my collection, which is a vintage piece, which is a lot newer than these pieces, is my Rolex State Just 16014 with the white gold fluted bezel, with that rhodium grey silverish dial. So I call it the Rolex Ghost. And you know, these now are very much a premium in the vintage watch world. You know, back in the day when I purchased this watch, you could pick them up from anything from two and a half to three thousand. Now you're looking at four to six thousand pounds, depending on the condition. Now, luckily enough, this watch, the Jubilee bracelet, doesn't have too much stretch and is very wearable. But it is an absolutely stunning piece. And this is circa 1982. A beautiful example. It's had some slight polishing done. It's to be expected. These watches, vintage pieces, and I'll let people know, expect it not to be perfect. Um, and, you know, the more dinks and bangs it has, the more authentic it probably is. But, um, you know, it's not going to be in perfect condition. And um, obviously there are better examples out there. You know, there's some pieces that are not wearable because of the poor condition, but that will be reflected in the price itself. But, you know, if you're going vintage Rolex, you know, they do fetch a premium because of the brand, you know, the, the Rolex brand, you know, it's one of, it's the most famous watch brand out there, you know, and this is a time where, you know, you know, Rolex have always been very robust and tough. So, you know, if you're looking for a piece that you can wear every day, I'd probably go with Rolex itself vintage because they are tough and built to last forever. I'm not saying the Zenith and the Omega aren't, but they're from an era, especially the Zenith, which is a very delicate piece. Um, it's not water resistant or anything like that. The actual Omega Cosmic Day Date is 30 meters water resistant, but I would never take it into the pool or anything like that. Or some of it, although it's got a Unishell case, unless it's been serviced and you've got the all clear from the actual watchmaker that you can swim with it, I wouldn't do so with a 30 meter water resistant watch. However, the Rolex, on the other hand, is 100 meters water resistant. It's been pressure checked by a watchmaker and it got the all clear that it is fully water resistant. But overall, you know, it is a different generation to the other vintage pieces. But I have to say, I absolutely love that Omega Cosmic and these really have jumped in price. And this is an era where Omega were on top. They were 
the you could call it the the in watch back then they were the rolex back then omega during that period of time you know they had the best advertising they were massive in asia and uh, it was very highly regarded and they were producing everything you know in house as well which is absolutely great they were innovating they were producing a vast amount of watches back then and where Rolex couldn't compete in terms of producing the models back th during that era but uh, they looked for to Zenith um, for movements as such so um, you know these are great brands to look at when looking for your first vintage piece so my Zenith is the Art Deco dress watch I went for jumbo size and that will reflect the price of it during this modern era now in the 2000s uh you know you want a larger piece you know they do range from 33 to 35 is normally the sweet point you know that is what you look at you know during that period of 40s to 50s um in the 60s they're like 35 mil but they did produce a jumbo size watch for the larger wrist at 36.5 millimeters not including the crown so you know it's definitely very wearable during these modern times but i don't mind a 35 mil you know it's not a watch that I, you know 35 mil watch is not something that i would consider wearing on a regular basis but sometimes you fancy something a little bit different guys so i hope you enjoyed today's video i just want to show you some video footage of these watches in all their glory great sophistication very cool indeed and allows you to buy into brands that maybe you thought you couldn't quite afford but what i would say to you is do your research go to a trusted dealer that you know will provide you a 12 month warranty and you've got somewhere to fall back on and make sure they've been around a long time that's what i would highly recommend when looking at vintage watches but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed today's video don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Check out the description of some of my recommended vintage watch dealers below. And I'll see you in the next video.